Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your professor today as we look at the basketball sets of Upper Deck's UD3. Now, UD3 is one of the few cases where a basketball set was created that then was, was propagated out to football and baseball. So it's kind of unique in the fact that it is a basketball creation. And the set comes out of the trend that Upper Deck was creating in creating ultra premium sets starting with SPX in 1996. And on the heels of that SPX set, Upper Deck created UD3 as almost like the rookie including version of SPX for, for that particular year. And it was a really good set that they created. It was built on a very odd concept. And so it, it's, a, it's a difficult set to really make sure that you have all the pieces. And it got even more confusing with their 97 set, but it is, it is a great concept and it's a fun set to collect. And because of the confusion, I'm going to be looking at both the 96-97 set and the 97-98 set. And then afterwards, I'm going to show you how the two sets differ. I'm going to show you uh, basically one-to-one -one with 96 above and 97 below. But that's only because of the nature of how these cards were created. Like I said, it was also then created for both football and for baseball. And those were sets made in 97 and then in 98. And by the time they got to 98, the full 98 sets, they had a very different model. But in basketball, they still used the original 1996 model for their 97, 98 set. So in basketball specifically, it can be difficult to, to tell one set from the other. Now, what really makes the sets confusing is the fact that the UD3 refers to three different themes in the set and the themes don't have any relationship at all. They are 20 cards and then 20 cards and 20 cards. So it's one through 20, 21 through 40, 41 through 60. And that's the only way that these cards are related together. They have very distinct themes in 96. So it starts off with rookies and then it has veteran cards, superstar veteran cards, and then it has second tier veterans at the end. But you can't necessarily follow it. And so it's, a, it's an idea explosion. And in 97, they used completely different ideas again. The set also has insert sets. It has three insert sets. And the insert sets are related to the main sets. So, so now let's go ahead and get into it. So for the 96-97 set, the set begins with 20 cards that are for rookies. This is the Hardwood Prospects cards. And these are a high gloss wood design with a basketball key designed into it with a picture of a player and the background behind the player is a rainbow prismatic background. It's a really neat card. And when you flip it over, it looks the same on the back. And these cards have very little information on them. These are not player cards. These are cards that are intended to show off just the design themselves with these particular cards, basically to an extreme. And this rookie set includes Kobe Bryant. It's one of his more outstanding, maybe his most outstanding rookie card. The next group of cards is a card design that is based upon a window with, with a see-through box in it. Now the front of the card, there's really nothing special to it. It's a die cut card and it has a protective layer over it, kind of like what Finest was doing. And the, if you peel it off, the front of the card looks really nice and glossy, but it doesn't really stand out in any way. The card seems to have no design. It is a very lackluster creation. I don't know what the original concept was. It's nice to have the window where light can pass through and, and the picture in the window lights up, but the, the card itself is, is just kind of a big mess. And those cards, the star focus cards. And then the set ends with the aerial artists set. And this set is a monochromatic card. It, it's a color pick, okay, yeah. It's a color picture of a player with a monochromatic background that is a brushed metal appearance. And then for the logo and for, for all of the things that Upper Deck normally does as gold, they do this as a, a blue steel or a platinum color. And on this gray scale background, it really looks quite striking. These are, these are wonderful cards, but these are not cards that are intended to be in a sea of cards in a big set. These are the cards that are supposed to be looked at individually and really appreciated on an individual basis. And these particular cards very much hold up to that. Now they have three insert sets, like I said, and the first insert set is the winning edge set. And this set is based on the same 
the same basic idea as the aerial artists or the, the tail end of the main set. And this set is actually 20 cards, so it can, it's not going to get confusing because they all have a W at the, at the front of it. But these cards are a bunch of superstar cards. They're, they're really nice cards. They use the same gray scale brushed metal background behind a color picture of the player, but here the, uh, the die cutted cards have actually have a, a bold border around it with text kind of sprinkled here and there. And the whole design of the card works well in, in a way that none of the cards in the main set did. Now, the rookie cards and the aerial artist cards in the main set do stand out as great card designs of their own. There's nothing really imaginative. The whole point is that it's a very simple, straightforward theme. And this card is more of a busy, chaotic theme, but it, it works beautifully, and it would have worked great as the middle theme if they hadn't done the, uh, the little window. Speaking of which, the Superstar Spotlight cards are the insert set that is based upon the same concept as the, the middle theme, the Star Focus cards. And these cards are basically a, a very simple card design with a big circle with an image through it. And that's it. That really is it. They didn't get into doing anything with it. The whole point is you're seeing through. And it's the rarity of the card that stands out. So with these see-through cards, these are an idea, and this is the same case of football. It, it, in every case that Upper Deck did this, I don't know what they, they thought would really work with it. And this may be the reason why these Upper Deck, or why these UD3 sets were designed as a haphazard uh, collection of ideas because they had some ideas that they didn't know if they could even work. And so they just kind of threw them out there and saw how they, how they worked. But the Center Spotlights cards are difficult to find. They're just not not really of any interest. And then the third insert set is the autographs cards. And these autograph, there are four autographs and they are based upon a, pretty much the hardwood theme. The cards look very similar to the rookies except they have, instead of a key, they just have a box with, with the player in it. So not really anything distinctive to that, but very, very, very nice autograph cards. For 97.98, they went with the same three themes, and in this case, they they had card designs that were more unified across the board, but none of them stood out as much, and none of them were stinkers in in the same in the same way. So the first one is the Jam Masters card, and this is just a white card, uh, glossy back with some some texturing in it for for some text, some numbers, and those kinds of things that are that are back there. And then a bunch of stuff in front, like the player and just some text. It's, it's not much of an idea for a card, but in basketball, these kinds of cards had been getting created and it, it was part of the basketball card world, the, the thematic approach that cards were kind of taking at the time. And then the Starstruck cards, which is the middle theme, this was back to the rainbow hollow foil kind of design. And in this particular case, this kind of got away from trying to really work with any design. Again, they just threw some stuff. It's a full bleed card and they threw some stuff on there. And it it's kind of interesting, but these look like insert sets. They don't look like the main set like the main cards in the set. Now, as you're noticing, there are a lot of Jordans in this. So unlike the original set where they had three distinct themes for all different players, here the the same player can show up in all three groupings there are no rookies in in the body of this set and so it's it's just throwing players in there in a in a more um more random but in a more star rich manner and the final portion of the set is the big picture cards and the big picture cards are where they finally figured out how to use these see-through cards they just made a see-through card now it has a fade so on the left side of the card it starts off with with an opacity that you can't see through. And then it fades over to a complete clarity on the other side, which enables you on the, on the flip side to actually see the number and the, the trademark and all the things that you need to read on the back of the card are not on a, on a surface where you can see on both sides. So it, it was a really clever technique that they used. But in this particular case, these see-through cards actually work. This makes sense. This is exactly what these cards you would think they they should have been why they didn't figure this out in 96 um, or in the main 97 sets 
with both football and with basketball, both with football and with baseball? I don't know. Because once you look at the card that they made in 97, 98, it makes perfect sense. And it is nice car, a nice card to the point where it's actually the class of this set. These are the great cards in this 1997, 98 UD3 set. And likewise, they have three different inserts in this set. And the first insert is just three Michael Jordan cards. And the cards combine together to, to form a big arc. And the cards use the same design as the, the first portion of the main set, the Jam Masters cards. And the cards have different levels of difficulty. So the, the first card, which is the left one, that is the easiest one to get. And then the middle card is, is in the middle. And then over on the right side, that's the hardest card to get. So it's actually difficult to complete all three cards. You basically progress in terms of building it as you go along. There's, again, there's nothing distinctive about these cards. It's, it's just kind of there. They're, they're nice. And then there's the awesome action card. And this is kind of the counterpoint to the winning edge card. And this can be one of the places where you really get confused between 96 and 97, which one, which set has winning edge and which set has awesome action. But the awesome action card uses the rainbow prismatic background, but it also adds a little bit of the, the light effects or the brushed metal technique in there in a nice combination. These cards also stand out really well. And then for rookies, they did the rookies as an insert set. And this is the rookie portrait set. And this uses that same window through the card. So it's the equivalent of the, B, of the big picture card. And this, again, is an upgrade over what they'd done in 96. It's still not great, but it's actually really pretty good in this, in this case. So when they were finally getting it ready, they were abandoning this whole idea. And then all, uh, all of the subsequent sets, which were only in baseball and in football, basically took a whole nother approach to making cards. But it really does seem like an idea factory anyways. And it was only for the two years that they made this in each of the sports. So the last insert set that they made in this particular year, they actually made a, a fourth insert, which is just autographs. And these autographs look nothing like anything else in the set. But for the three main inserts, just like in 96, each one ha has the, a variation on the same theme as in the main set. So again, we have six different themes for the main set and six different themes for the inserts. So let me go ahead and show you what the 96 versus the 97 sets are, are like so that if you're actually trying to put together a set or figure out what card goes with what, this will be a, a simple little straightforward screen capture that you can, you can look at and use as a guide. So on the top you have the hardwood prospects on the left and then you have the star focus and then aerial artist of course is on the right on the top. That's 1996 and then 97 has, it starts off with jam masters and then it has starstruck and then it closes out with big picture. For the insert sets it starts off with winning edge and then it has superstar spotlights and then it has the autographs. And in 97, you start off with the Michael Jordan cards, and then you go with the rookie portraits, and then you go with the awesome action. So that's basically a guide to these cards. This is not a long video because there's not a lot to go into, but these two sets are a chaotic jumble that are really, really neat. If you can wade your way through figuring out what goes with which set. But in the end, they are neat. They are little chunks of 20, 20 cards, 20 cards, 20 cards and then maybe 20 cards or 15 cards or 10 cards, however many in the inserts. It's not a demanding set overall. The cards really do look great. So depending on who you're collecting, getting a couple of these cards is, is a fantastic thing to do. And the 97 set is certainly laden with Michael Jordan cards. So I hope that you, hope that you enjoyed that video. I hope that you've learned some things. If, you're, if you have any questions about it, if you have any, any perspectives or some differences of opinion, let me know in the comments below. Thank you, for, thank you very much for watching, and I hope that you'll like this video. hope that you'll subscribe and look for other videos that I do. And thank you very much for watching.